I have a few announcements this morning. There will be no services here tonight. On Tuesday, October 26, there will be a seminar discussing changes to Medicare for 2022 that will be held out here in the Fellowship Hall. It's a very important meeting. It will be beneficial for all that are on the Medicare program. It will be moved to the lobby of the conference center due to Worship Center water line leak. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. Be across the street. Uh, how are we doing on that water? We had a plumber uh, come out and, and take measurements. Uh, he's working on a bed. He talked with Brother Bruce uh, yesterday. Uh, I didn't get an email yet, so I'm looking for it. Uh, his, his estimate is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $6,000. That is much less than we had anticipated. Okay. So right now we don't have a definitive timeline on when we're going to get the water back. Uh, he knows that we need it as soon as possible. Uh, and he had some material that he was waiting on, and I don't know if he got everything that he needs. Bruce, you might address it better. No, uh, everything's still kind of backed up with, with just everything else. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next Sunday, there will be no services here due to the retreat that is being held. And I have a card here from the Zahner family. Dear First Branch, thank you for all the love and prayers we have received. We appreciate the support from everyone during this time of grieving. We know she will be greatly missed. We love each of you and thank you again, Remnant family, for all your support. This is from the Zahner family. I can remember Sister Lou, I think, Probably one of the first times I had spoken with her after we gathered here in, I think, 2007. First thing she did was come up to me and grab me by my necktie, pull me down, and said, you are coming to First Branch. So she was a, she was a trip. Thank you. I welcome you here this morning, and we welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Thank you, ladies, for your minister of music this morning. I, I knew it was going to be Savannah, but I didn't know we was going to have three. But thank you very much. Uh, before we get started this morning, we all have heard that Derek Ashwell is very, very sick, and he was admitted to the hospital yesterday. Is that correct, Mary? And uh, I have asked Brother Albert Smith, Rogers, I'm sorry, Albert Smith, Rogers to come up here and offer a word of prayer in, in Derek's behalf. Brother Albert, would you come, please? Shall we pray? Oh God, our loving Father, 
we come before you in the name of your only begotten, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We've come in this a holy place, a quiet place that uh, as we contemplate on you, we feel you. We feel that spirit, Father, that uh, you pour down upon us. And Father, we come before you on behalf of a dear brother of ours that uh, is known unto you, for you know all things. And Father, have that, uh, that same ailment that he suffers from at this time. I know uh, somewhat of the things that he must be going through. And Father, I just would ask you that uh, you would lay your hand upon our brother, that he would feel your spirit and know that uh, you are watching over him and caring for him that you would strengthen him and may his recovery be quickly, Father. But according to your will, not ours, but we pray, Father, you would be with his caregivers, that they would be sensitive to the leading of your spirit, whether known to them or not, in the way that they would treat our brother, and that Derek would uh, soon know that uh, he is getting better and breathe that breath of life so much easier. And Father, uh, we would be remiss if we didn't remember others that are fresh on our heart. Brother Roger has been uh, doing so much better. And we would pray, Father, that you would continue to be with him and strengthen him that he soon can come and worship with us together. And that your healing ministry that is promised to those that believe when they ask in your name that he uh, would be blessed, Father, especially this day, knowing and feeling, Father, those prayers that have been offered by so very many for his cause. And Father, uh, we would also remember Brother David Patrick, who just recently had surgery, and uh, pray for your healing power to be upon him. And the different procedures that he still faces, Father, we place him in your hands for a blessing that only you can give. Lord, forgive us that uh, so often we only come before you when uh, there are things within our heart that are concerning us. We ask for forgiveness, Father, that uh, we don't come to you in praise more often for truly... You bless us every day. You have given us the breath of life. You sustain us. You strengthen us. You prepare a way before us. You seal the way behind us. And you have prepared a place for us, Father, that is beyond our comprehension that will be a wonderful place to enjoy. I pray for each of these, my brothers and sisters, Lord, that have come this day that the concerns and the desires upon their hearts, that they would know the loving God that you are is providing for them, even unknown to them, and that you would bless them, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your grace, for sharing your son for us, and that wonderful ministry he brought that we have a way to come before you because of him. So, Father, may it be so the things that we have asked this morning. May it be so that you are praised forevermore, not just by the holy angels, but by your creation everywhere. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to thank you, Brother Elber, for offering that a very eloquent prayer, and for every one of us, we could say amen to that prayer. Thank you very much. I'll introduce those men that are helping me to preside up here this morning. Brother Ron Thompson over here on my right is going to offer the invocational prayer this morning. Elder Don Perrin over here will bring our 
uh, closing prayer. And Brother Eric Wilson will bring our spoken word this morning. And my name is Kenneth Bird, and I'm your presider. The scripture that I have chosen this morning is from 3rd Nephi, 7th chapter, 10 and 11 verses. Behold, I am the law and the light. Look unto me and endure to the end, and ye shall live. For unto him that endureth to the end will I give eternal life. Behold, I have given unto you the commandments, therefore keep my commandments. We will stand and sing hymn number 364 and remain standing for the invocation by Brother Ron Thompson. Lord God, our eternal Father, we're here because of you this morning, Father. We're here because of the agency you granted us to make the choice, and the choice is to be here, to learn more about you, and to try to live our lives in a way that would be acceptable to you. I pray for my brother Ken as he presides over this service, and brother Eric, as he brings the message, may your spirit rest upon him that we may be ever mindful that you're with us, that you continue to want us to come together and try to be one in our thoughts and in our prayers and in our understanding that you are God who loves each of us. May we in turn continue to love you and love those who are in our midst that we might understand the purpose of life is to bring us together and to share in the gospel message that we might climb the mountain, that mountain that comes to you, and uh, be ever mindful that you continue to look at us daily in our daily life, in, around, and through us. 
As Paul said, thank you, Father, for this hour. And I pray it in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. this morning I've chosen two verses out of Romans 14th chapter Paul says for whether we live we live unto the Lord and whether we die we die unto the Lord whether we live therefore or die we are the Lord's so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God giving ourselves account to God is done in many different ways and this morning, the way we're going to do it is by taking up a collection of our material wealth and those things that we have considered that we might be able to give uh, back to our Heavenly Father. We know He doesn't need our money. He has it all. It all belongs to Him in the beginning, but He has loaned it to us, and we're to give back sacrificially unto the benefits of His building up this kingdom that he has uh, going to bring forth. And he has to bring a people to this, bring his kingdom to a people that's willing to accept him. And to accept him, we have to be obedient to his word. And that is to, you might say, ante up to those uh, good things that has been given to us. So if you would, bow your heads and I'll offer a prayer. Our great God and our heavenly Father, once again, Lord, we bow before the humbly, thanking you, Heavenly Father, for the blessings of life and the good things that has come our way. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, for those things that are necessary for our needs of just living and maintenance. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the good blessings of life other than those that are needy. We know, Heavenly Father, that you are good to your children. And we know, Heavenly Father, that you love all your children. So help us, Heavenly Father, to be more uh, attuned to the needs of others and the need for us to be obedient to the commandments given to us in the giving of our material blessings. So we thank thee again, Heavenly Father, and we ask this blessings in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Good morning. For a scripture setting I've chosen from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 5 through 7. 
And when I was young in, my, in the faith, I didn't really like the book of Proverbs. It just seemed like a lot of riddles to me and didn't, didn't speak to me. But now, I really enjoy the book of Proverbs, and I find a lot of wisdom in it. And uh, that is all, what Solomon asked of the Lord was wisdom. And so there are a lot of pearls of, of, and nuggets of wisdom in the book of Proverbs. So now if I had to pick, if I could only have one book from the scriptures, for me, it might, might be this one. It might be this one. But our theme for today is trusting in the Lord, and the scripture goes right along with that. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. The, the gospel in one word is love. Love thy neighbor as thy brother. Love, love, love. Peace, 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 peace. The gospel in one word is peace. Peace that passes all understanding. Thank you, ladies. For some of you, that might have been the first time that you had the opportunity to hear those young ladies sing. I was blessed with an opportunity, for they were all down at senior high camp this year down in Oklahoma, and uh, so I had the opportunity to hear them sing down there, and they sang for our youth service uh, back up here that we had uh, back in August or September or so. I appreciate your ministry, and it's good to also see our young deacons serving and, and our young men on the, the cameras. Um, our youth department is, um, especially our older youth department, is, is, is doing well. We had a lot of young younger kids move up and do fish, our, our older youth group, and uh, we have been very uh, active lately. In fact, they had a lock-in on Friday night over at the conference center, and uh, Brother Chad put together a hayride for us, and we had a campfire, and then, and then Brother Chad and I went home and went to bed, and our wives stayed up with the kids all night, so they had lots of other activities. Um, but it's good to have the youth uh, here today, the older youth in particular. So as I mentioned, our theme for today is trusting in the Lord. And that scripture I read is, is one of my favorites, actually, so... I felt uh, led to, to share it, and in my profession, um, my day job that I that I go to every day, we work a lot with databases and information, and so rules and definition and logic is, is important to us. So part of what I want to do a little bit today is unpack this proverb and talk about some of what is there. Because I've heard people say, and I believe this very much, that the scriptures 
can be like an onion. There are many layers to it. And there's a surface meaning. But if you seek and dig a little deeper, there's more meaning. And if you seek a little more and you dig a little more, there's even more meaning. And I think every line, every space between the word, every paragraph, everything the Lord has in his holy word has meaning. And the more you study both the Old Testament and the New and the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, you see how it connects together and how it works together and how God has um, amazing guidance and counsel. And if there's any imperfections in these books, it's because of men, man, um, not because of God. It'd be our, our, our fault in interpretation. So I want to talk about a little bit more about that scripture and about trust. You know, when we trust somebody, we feel confident or sure that that, part, that person that we trust, they will do what they say they're going to do. We put a lot of confidence in them. And in spiritual matters, of course, trusting means God, trusting on God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Now, I did a little bit of digging on some of these words, and uh, I, use, I like to use Strong's Concordance because these words, especially Proverbs in the Old Testament, these were not written in English originally. They were written in other languages. In Hebrew, I know, uh, well, I don't know Hebrew, but one Hebrew symbol can have multiple meanings. It's not like the English language. So it's interesting to go look at the original, the word, the Hebrew words and what it could mean and expound upon God's word in that way. So uh, trust in the, in the use of, uh, and from Strong says, to have confidence, to be confident, bold, and secure, to feel safe. And so as you think about that, I want you to think about someone that you trust, someone that you have a lot of confidence in that you feel this way about. And may, maybe if you have children or you've had children, who is it that you feel comfortable leaving your children with? Who's that person? And maybe you don't have children or you are a child. Think about your most favorite toy, your, something you have, possession. Now think about giving that to somebody else to take care of. She's shaking her head no. <laughs> think about who that person might be. Who is it that, if you have that person in mind, think, think about them um, and why is it that you trust them? What is it about them that you, that makes you feel confident in them to, to leave your most valuable thing with them to make you secure? Now obviously, it's part of it is because you have a relationship with this person. You have spent time with them. You know that they, who they are, and that they have a consistency to them, and that they deliver on their promises. They do what they say they're going to do. So your trust in them has grown. And maybe it didn't start off that way, but it's something that has grown over time. So if we go back to the, the scripture, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, what does that mean, all thine heart? Well, again, back to the concordance, it means the inner man, the mind, the will, heart, understanding, the inner part, determination, it's the seat of appetites or emotions or passions or of courage. So this is not a casual trust. This is not, you, you we all, uh, exhibit some amount of trust when we go out to eat. We go to Outback and have a steak. We trust somewhat that the cook, you know, cooked it properly and that there was cleanliness. Uh, but that's not the kind of trust that this is scripture is talking about. This is putting every ounce of your being into this person or this, this, um, this God. Everything that you have, you, you have full confidence. It's all, all of your trust in this person and complete and total reliance you're surrendering to them you're surrendering all that you have and that makes me think of the hymn all to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I will ever love and trust him in his daily presence live 
Now, there are some excellent examples in the scriptures, and we could spend a lot of time on this, of people who displayed this kind of trust, the kind of trust that I'm, that I'm talking about. In the book of Job, and we know the story about Job, there's just one little line that says, though he slay me, he's referring to the trials and tribulations that, he, that came upon Job. He says, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. And Daniel, with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it talks about the situation where Nebuchadnezzar came to the fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth, come hither. And then they came out, and the princes and the governors and all the captains and, and the king's counselors, they were all gathered together, and they saw these men. Whose, whose bodies the fire had no power over, nor was a hair on their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, and this is the part that's captured my attention, Blessed be the God of, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him. And they have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they may not serve uh, nor worship any god except their own god. Now that's a trust. What a situation that they were in. Another one, I don't, I don't know if it was just the reference to fire that got me thinking, but the speech that uh, Abin, Abinadi gave while he went through his fiery death, he said, I will not recall the words which I have spoken unto you concerning this people, for they are true. The, and ye, that ye need know, know of their surety. I have suffered them myself. I have fallen into your hands, yet I will suffer even unto death. I will not recall my words, and they shall stand as a testimony against you. What trust Abinadi had, even unto his own death, that he would still not recall the words he said to uh, the people and calling them to repentance. That was in Mosiah chapter 9, the Book of Mormon. And then my last one is also from the Book of Mormon. In this setting, we all know very well, and Nephi and his family are leaving, and uh, Lehi tells them, hold on, <laughs> we, f we forgot something. I need you to go back and get the, the records from uh, Laban. And, uh, of course, um, they were um, his brothers. They were astonished at this I idea, but, but Nephi says that, um, and it came to pass that Nephi said unto my father, I will go and do those things, Father. I will do those things that the Lord hath commanded. For I know that the Lord gives no command unto the children of men except he prepares a way for them to accomplish that which he commandeth them. And so all these servants, what trust they had and confidence, they knew, they knew God would be with them. And then uh, I'll just point you to, uh, it seems like every sport has a hall of fame. Uh, I refer to the Hebrews 11 as the hall of faith. If you read through that, it's all about uh, men and women who had great faith and, tr and trust. Um, I use those two things almost synonymously. I can't detect a difference between trust and faith, but they're very, very closely related. So if we go back again to Proverbs Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Lean not unto thy own understanding. And it's my feeling, my impression, that this is uh, an area that where we sometimes struggle. We, may, we rely on our own strength, our own judgment. And perhaps we're rushed to make decisions without consulting with God, without asking him. And this is very much the way of the world. I don't know if it was like this um, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. You know, I don't know in other uh, dispensations of time if this urgency to, to rush, but we live in the information age, and information is just flying at our fingertips. We always have access to, to information, and if we have a question, we just ask Google. And... Uh, so I got creative with this, and I think as followers of, of the Most High God that we should take the oogle off and add a D on it, and we should ask God. And I was talking with uh, Isaac about this this morning, and he said, 
we talked about artificial intelligence. He said, well, we asked Alexa and Siri and I don't know however many other for answers, but we should ask God. Right, Isaac? Ask God. That should be our first source of information. Our first source of truth is, is God because we trust in him. And it says clearly uh, in the scripture in many places, but Isaiah I, I like to pair this one right up right up with Proverbs. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Isaiah 55 and verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are, are your ways my ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So if we have uh, a friend in Jesus, and we have a God who's all-knowing and all-powerful, and he's... Uh, everywhere and he created all these things then why why would we hesitate to ask him for advice to seek truth for him truth from him and my only feeling is that it goes back to the, the script the verse in proverbs about we lean unto our own, our own understanding or we, we perhaps miss appropriately credit it to our own intelligence and our own thoughts, and we don't. We we sometimes forget where intelligence comes from. And finally, in verse six, um, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Now, this word acknowledge, as I peeled it back, did not mean what exactly what I thought it meant. It actually had a much better meaning as I looked to it, and it says from Strong's that knowledge, acknowledge means to know, to perceive, to find out and discern, to know by experience, to, to be acquainted with, to be skillful, to have knowledge, be or become known, to be revealed. So if we restate that scripture with those words, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways, know God, discern him, know him by your experience with him, become acquainted with him, and he shall direct thy paths. It's just a little, diff little more meaning there as uh, we look to it. And the way that we accomplish this is what we, we always talk about in the church, to pray, to study, to, to fast, and to become, be an active member in the church and whatever your role is and. I'm preaching to the choir, obviously here, because you are regular attendees. But if those are, who are listening online are not uh, active in our church, uh, or if you're looking at our church, then we encourage you to um, come and be an active member. And we have men who serve in the priesthood, but we have members of our church that do a variety of roles. We have women's council, and we have... Sunday school teachers and church school directors and camp directors and other opportunities in the youth and there's our food pantry, Zion's Academy. The church is very um, full of ministry and opportunity besides what happens here on Sundays. We, we know that the church has many things working and so this is part of knowing God and and acknowledging him and learning about him is stepping out and being active in our faith. So speaking of faith, I just want to draw a connection between faith and, and trust, which um, if they're not exactly the same thing, they're very closely related. And I uh, went across, because I was doing preparation for this, the lectures of faith. And if you don't know what this is, um, these are and they're uh, on our church website. Very easily you can find them, but if they're, these were originally were seven lectures on the doctrine and the theology of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and they were put into the DNC in the 1835 edition, but originally they were given by Joseph to the elders at the School of the Prophets in the 1834 and 1835. And so in the very first lecture, in the very first sentence, it says, faith being the first principle in our religion, and it's the foundation of righteousness. The foundation of righteousness. That sounds pretty important, the foundation. 
Faith, and this is just more uh, from that lecture on faith. It says, faith and faith only is the moving cause of all action in a person, and that without it, both mind and body would be a, in a state of inactivity. And all their exertions would cease, both physical and mental. Uh, were we to go back and reflect upon the history of our lives from the period of our first recollection and ask ourselves, uh, what principle excited us to move into action? I'm uh, paraphrasing this a little bit. Or what energy and activity in our lawful avocations, callings, and per pursuits, what would be the answer? What's moving us to do this? Would it not be the, that the assurance which we have the existence of things which had not seen as of yet? Faith. Was it not the hope which you, we had in consequence of our belief in unseen things which stimulated us to action? and exertion in order to obtain them? Are you not dependent upon your faith or belief for the acquisition of all knowledge, wisdom, and intelligence? Would you exert yourselves to obtain wisdom and intelligence unless you did believe that you would obtain them? Would you ever have sown if you had not believed that you could reap? Would you ever have planted if you believed you could not gather? Would you have ever asked if you believe you could not receive? Would you have ever sought if you would believe you would not have found? And would you have ever knocked if you did not believe it was opened unto you? This is all from the lectures of faith. Exactly. And this is a core tenet of the gospel and of our, of everything, faith. And so it forms our base or our foundation. And if you think about um, the full armor of God, which is most likely Paul's depiction of a Roman soldier. And you think about the shield of faith. Think about how powerful that is in a defense against the enemy. That thing can absorb a lot of blows, the shield of faith. So just imagine you're fighting someone and they're, you know, shooting arrows at you or hitting you with a sword or whatever it is, and you have that shield up there to protect yourself against it. Now imagine it being gone. Now you're just left with your, your armor, which could probably only take so much. Now I found this in my uh, studies, and I never heard of this, and this is pretty awesome. Pretty awesome to think about this in terms of all of us working together with, in unison. But it said that the, the Roman military had a very inventive and, and effective tactic where they would take their large shields and when the enemy was you know, firing arrows on, on them that and other projectiles and whatever else they would throw at them that the soldiers would would move into a rectangular solution and they'd form what's called a testudo or a tort tortoise a, a turtle a turtle formation so, and, the, and those on the outside would sh use their shields to create a wall around the perimeter, and then those in the middle would raise their shields up over their heads to protect. And this became like a human tank that they could move. Just think about that picture. How cool is that? that they, and if you think about the shield of faith and all of us working together, what a powerful thing that forms together when we all work in unison against the, the, um, the adversary. He, remember, fiery darts, he's shooting at us, he seeks our destruction. We have a very real enemy, but yet we have these, these weapons. I thought that was super cool. I found that um, in my preparation. And it, with it, Ecclesiastes 4 and 12, and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold, threefold cord shall not easily be broken. So I have one more uh, pi mental picture that I want to share from the Book of Mormon, Alma and 16. Uh, and, I, and I'm going to talk some more about this to reinforce trusting in the Lord. And it's literally like the root of a tree in this passage in the Book of Mormon. And I don't know what it is about trees, but I just find them captivating. And there's a lot of sh references Haley's laughing at me. <laughs> There's a lot of references in the scriptures about trees and about roots and about branches, and the Lord uses trees as a teaching tool. 
And in this uh, passage in Alma, chapter 16, it's a really cool um, uh, teaching. And it says, this is a verse 151. Behold, if you awake and arouse your faculties, even into an experiment unto my words, and you just exercise a particle of faith, just a little, little bit, just a little bit of faith. Yea, even if you can no more than desire to believe, let that desire work in you, even until you believe in a manner which that you can give place for a portion of my words. Now we will compare the word unto a seed, and if you give place to this and let it plant in your heart, if it's a true seed or a good seed, if you... If you don't cast it away because of your unbelief, you will resist and, and, and re not resist the Spirit of the Lord. Behold, it will begin to swell within you. And behold, as the seed swell, uh, swells and it sprouts and it begins to grow, then it must need stay that it is a good seed. For behold, it, it's doing these things. And behold, as this tree begins to grow, you will say, let us nourish this with great care and that it may get root and that it may grow up and bring forth fruit. I mean, isn't, I guess the trees have more than one purpose, but if it's a fruit tree, it should be producing fruit. That's why it was, it's made. And behold, uh, but if you neglect the tree and take no thought for its nourishment, behold, it will not get any root, and the, and the sun will come down and scorch it because it doesn't have any root, and it will wither away, and you pluck it up and you cast it out. We went and did a project at your son's farm the youth group, and there were a lot of apple trees there, and some of them were a little shaky, but some of them were producing a lot of fruit, and it was useful. And thus, if you will just nourish the word, and I love that phrase, if you will just nourish the word, looking forward with an eye of fate to the fruit thereof, you can, um, you can pluck forth the, tr the fruit of the tree of life. And if you will nourish it, as the tree is beginning to grow by your faith and great diligence and with patience, looking forward to the fruit, it shall take root, and it, behold, it shall be a tree springing unto everlasting life. What a cool picture that, that is. Such vivid imagery. And what I really um, captured, captivates me about that is about, about the progression or the kind of the um, evolution of, of, of a believer over their course of their walk with the Lord. Um, and in the end, we know what outcome it, he, it is that he desires from us is that he wants us to bear fruit, that fruit being good works, and that, as it says in the book of James, I'll show you my faith by my works. That's how the uh, Lord says we will know, you'll know my followers by their love. You'll, they'll do something. You can see it's visible. It's tangible you can, if, if uh, a person who's a follower and has these, these works. So trusting in the Lord, taking that little seed should grow into something magnificent. And uh, may we all be beautiful trees for the Lord and uh, produce fruit and change colors and do all sorts of amazing things for him. So my personal testimony to you, brothers and sisters, is that you can trust in this God that we believe in, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is a person you can lean on. And there's a few experiences that I want to share in my last uh, bit of time here. Um, some personal testimonies. One um, was actually when Ian was little, and I don't know where to, I don't know if your kids had problems with croup, but it seems like every one of our kids has, has had croup. And as you probably remember, they wake up at night and they're, they're coughing and their throat is, you know, airways closing up and then it becomes like a barking sound and you're freaking out. Is, are they going to breathe? You know, something going to happen? What do, we, what do we need to do? And at this moment, uh, when this was happening, when Ian was little, um, we just felt at that moment, like, this is the middle of the night. We just felt like we, we need, before we rush him off and call Children's Mercy uh, helpline and take him down to the ER. Let's, let's put God's word to test. So, and we felt like we should call the elders first. And so we did that. And the elders got up in the middle of the night and came over to our house. And 
administered to Ian. And it wasn't long after that that Ian, he calmed down and his breathing got better and he made it through the night. And then we didn't have to go to the hospital, which we might have typically done. And that was an element of trust. That was a big, huge element of trust that we, had, we put into the Lord. There's another experience where Samantha and I, we lived in a house uh, over off 23rd Street in um, Holkey and Jackson, in a, in a neighborhood over there in Independence. And uh, we had been there, I don't know, five years or so. And we felt like we needed to downsize and pay off some debts and get into a better financial position. And this was a newer house, and we, we hadn't been there really that long. And this was right at the beginning of the 2008 housing collapse and the recession. This had just begun. And so, you know, things were starting to take a dive. And uh, we felt like we should put this house up on the market, and we used a church uh, friend of ours to, to sell it. And within a couple weeks, I think it was two weeks, less than two weeks, a couple came, and they looked at our house, and they really liked it. And they also, but the pricing was the price that we wanted a little more, they wanted to, to pay a little less. But they did not use their own agent, and they agreed to use our agent. And because they did that, our agent was able to shave off some of the commission and get the price just right for us. And they came over to our house, and they threw our agent. I remember them saying that they uh, felt just a good spirit about our home. And, you know, again, we were putting trust in the Lord. We didn't know how this was going to go. We didn't, I don't think we even knew where we were going to go live next. We just felt like we needed to get out of this large debt that we owed and clean up some other things. And... Um, I'll never forget after they made the offer on the house and they, we were negotiating some, some other items, they told our agent, they said, we'd like, for you, we'd like to keep a sign. We asked them if we can keep a sign that you have in your house. And it was over our front door. And the sign said, faith is not believing that God can. It's knowing. It's knowing that he will. And whenever they uh, said that, it was like God was talking right directly to us through our agent. It was God was giving us confirmation that he could be trusted and that we were being faithful to his, what he wanted us to do and that um, he was going to take care of us through the situation and he was going to see it through. And that was tremendous um, for us. And another example of us, of our family, trusting in the Lord. And there's a lot more, and I know you have your own testimonies, and I hope you think about, about them trusting in the Lord and, and what he's done for you. In closing, I want to uh, say that if any of you um, here or anybody watching or who may watch this recording, if you're going through a season of, of doubt, unreasonable doubt that's lingering, pray to the Lord and ask him to remove your unbelief and reach out to him. If you're worrying about something a lot, I mean, we all worry some, but if it's excessive worry, then that's a, that should be a red flag to all of us, that there's something not quite right here. We're, our trust, and if we know we're doing what God says, or what he wants us to do. We have that conviction. We have that confirmation. We've sought for witnesses. We have that burning in our bosom. But, it, but yet if we're still doubting or worrying, then that's, that should be a red flag that we need to be watched for and ask God to reconfirm our, our conviction because he is a God you can trust. And I found this. Um, I know nothing about this woman. Her name's Kayleen Yoder. This was her, her words and her thoughts, but it, it was just spoke to me, and I felt like I should share it with you. And she's a, a blogger, and she wrote The Seven Reasons You Can Trust God. And these I just thought it was very simply stated and easy to understand, and it's very true. 
and I couldn't find anything I disagreed with. So I wanted to share it with you in closing. So she says, you can trust God because he has a record of keeping his word, especially to those who strive to follow after him. Numbers 23 and 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said he, that he shall and he doesn't do it, or hath he spoken and he does not make it good? That's from Numbers. His nature is faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, one of my favorite hymns. Second Timothy and 2 says, if we believe not, if we, if we are lacking in belief, yet he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. He will never leave us or forget us. Isaiah 49 says in 16, Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. God knows your needs better than you do and before you do. Psalm 139 and 3 says, he encompassed me at my path and my lying down, and he's acquainted with all my ways. And then in Luke it says, 12 and 7, it says the very hairs on our head are all numbered. That's a lot of, that's a lot of hairs. That's a lot of counting. That's a lot to look after, but he numbers our, our, even the hairs on our head. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. God is not surprised or baffled at your situation. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, the, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which has been done, it shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. God's been around the block. He's, uh, he's done this before. He's seen, he's seen things. He knows. He's not surprised. Nothing is too hard for God. Jeremiah 32 and 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out their, the, your arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. And finally, the last reason why you should trust God. He promises consistency. Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And in James 1, it says, Every good and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variables, variableness, neither shadow of turning. That's another line from Great is Thy Faithfulness. He is a God that you can trust and you can look after and reflect upon your testimonies, upon your, your experiences and share with others so that they know if they're doubting or they're worried that they, they know they can reach out to our God and that he can deliver upon what they need. Maybe not in their timing, but he will deliver on their promises, on his promises. I hope that the Lord will bless you and bless all of us and that you may have been edified by uh, the message today and by our service. We thank you, Brother Eric, for bringing that message to us this morning, the message of truth. And uh, we also thank these ladies for their ministry of music this morning and thank Brother Dave for his ministry of music on the piano. Uh, Dave has his way of playing a piano that's different than most everyone else. And uh, we all can recognize that. Many times Dave's got one particular hymn he plays in his prelude, but I didn't hear that today, so... Maybe I can hear that next time he plays. If you'll turn in your hymnals to hymn number 61, we will stand and sing this hymn. And after that, Brother Don Perrin will bring our closing prayer. Hymn number 61. <coughs>
our God and eternal Father, we have learned in this hour that we should trust all and be with us as a congregation that we trust each one, that we know that these people are good people and we love them as you do. So be with us as we depart from here, that we may, may take that love with us and share it with others, that we may be willing to do that in Christ's name. Amen.